The threat for severe thunderstorms has increased significantly for tomorrow. I'm meteorologist Jason Nappy tracking the threat here now with you. Augusta, Portland, Bangor, Eastport, Penobscot Bay, the Midcoast, Southern Maine, the Southwest Interior, heading all the way down, almost all of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, okay, all under that threat. Vermont, New Hampshire, okay, not in the mountains. In the mountains, the threat is a lot lower. It's almost nothing. It is going to be from here, so basically around the Carabasset Valley, heading up towards around Lincoln, just south of Millinocket, South Dakota region, northern Washington County, all the way down south. You're level one up to two, okay? So that is a significant increase for a day two outlook for severe thunderstorms. So let me break it down now in the hour by hour. This is a model. This is a look at what the radar could look like tomorrow afternoon. This is a guide. This is not exactly what it's going to look like, but it gives you an idea so you can plan your day. Saturday looks great. Sebago days looks great. Everything is great today. Get out there and enjoy yourself. However, tomorrow, watch the time code here. This is tomorrow. Okay, watch what happens here. You're going to notice showers and thunderstorms fire up in that area I just showed you that's highlighted, okay? And this is where you're going to have those rain bombs, a few wet microbursts, the potential is there for that, and also some straight line wind and torrential downpours. There is a threat for flash flooding. If any of these storms stay over the same spot for an hour or two, you're going to have one, two, three inches or more of rainfall, okay? So this model, this guide shows where that rain is going to be. And I'm going to now bring up the, uh, the, the, the threat for flash flooding. So I want to show you that. So this is a look. I'm going to back it up. There's Maine. Okay, and now look here. Look where all the red. Now this is not exactly where the rain is going to be. I want to show you. It's a model. It's a guide. But what this tells me here is that there is an opportunity for flash flooding. Okay, those totals, which are in the four, five, six, seven inch range locally, could certainly happen. You could get more than that too, especially if these thunderstorms train, they go over the same spot, like train tracks. Okay, if that happens, you're gonna get more than an inch, more than two, and could be even more than three inches. So you gotta watch out down east. Even if you don't get a rain bomb, if you don't get a wet microburst, you could still get torrential downpours and you can still get flooding. So I want you to take this, this threat very seriously because flash flooding can happen in minutes. In an hour's time, you could get three inches of rainfall and the ground, especially if you've got pavement around you, it will not be able to handle that uh, amount of rainfall. So now let's do it hour by hour and show you the forecast. It is great on Saturday. I mean, look at this. This is Saturday afternoon here. Just a fantastic day. Uh, for doing things outdoors. The Sebago days looks great up at the lake. 80 in Bangor, the humidity is low. Just a fantastic Saturday. We haven't had a ton of those this spring and summer, so we'll take every great Saturday we can get. Okay, it's going to be perfect. Now, on Sunday, this is Sunday afternoon. Now, this is not going to have the bright reds. This is just the probability of rainfall. Okay, so it's not going to have the bright reds showing the thunderstorms. However, there is definitely going to be rainfall Sunday afternoon. As you can see here, there's a lot of green popping up, okay? The wind is going to be coming out of the south. Now, I will point out, with the wind out of the south, off the much, obviously, cooler ocean, the Gulf of Maine, there's an opportunity here that some of these thunderstorms run into that stable air and get knocked down a bit. So this turns more into a rain situation and less of a severe threat, okay? This is not carved in stone yet of exactly who gets a microburst, who doesn't, who gets wind damage and who doesn't, who gets the rainfall and who doesn't. It gives you an idea here to put the map into motion hour by hour by Sunday at 8 o'clock at night and then now by 11 o'clock at night that front has cleared. Wind is now northwest. The dry air has come in and it's over with. So timing is afternoon for the most part. That's when the heaviest is going to be through the evening time. By 11 o'clock it is over. Okay, you are all clear. Sunday night at 11 o'clock, the storm and the cold front has moved over. Now, I'll take you into Monday at 5 o'clock. Notice here, you have a northwest wind, a land breeze. Humidity will be low. There's going to be a trough swinging through, a pretty strong one north of us. So it's going to bring the cooler air down from Canada. And we are going to be all clear on Monday. Same thing on Tuesday. You're going to notice here. 
Look at Tuesday. This is Tuesday at 5 o'clock. We'll stop it right here. Okay, northwest breeze. You have a little bit of an onshore flow going on here, southern coast. That's typical as the front has cleared. Um, so you'll see a, just a little bump in humidity a little bit on Tuesday, but not much. It'll be in the 50s for dew points. Wednesday, this is Wednesday afternoon, still dry. Okay, the rain is up here in Canada Wednesday. The wind is out of the south here. Humidity is starting to go up a little bit. Uh, nothing too terrible, but definitely notice humidity going up. Dew points getting close to the 60s. Okay, but still pretty comfortable by late July standards. Then on Thursday, here is your next opportunity for rainfall. Thursday night, 8 o'clock. Notice here you've got green popping up. So another front, wind out of the south, humidity will be rising. Probably get a few thunderstorms as well. I'll track that threat closer to the week as we get deeper into the week. And then by Friday and Saturday of next week, could get another decent Saturday out. Could get a couple Saturdays in a row here. Notice here, not a lot of green on the map here. So as far as the probability of rainfall is quite low. Okay, and this is for the forecast going forward. This is, this is the next Saturday. So we could get two decent Saturdays out of the forecast. We have take that. Haven't had a lot of those, right? And so we'll take every bit of it. Now, let's take a look at the forecast in more detail uh, for my loyal followers in Maine. And obviously, Nappy's Notes is showing a super Saturday. There is a threat for severe thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon, not all day. Hail, wind, downpours. Got to watch out for if we get a wet microburst, if we get a rain bomb. So with that, you get a lot of wind and you get a lot of rain. And there certainly could be some hail in there too. Got to watch out and see how that plays out tomorrow afternoon. I will have updates to this coming up this afternoon and then another update tomorrow morning. I will give my final update on the forecast and I'll likely be storm tracking some of these. I'll be storm chasing out in the field, driving up towards the mid coast tomorrow during the, during the storms and getting obviously any videos I can get and, and doing some live storm tracking for you. And that is going to be tomorrow. So in the mountains, I don't have a lot of thunder in the mountains tomorrow. The air is not going to be unstable enough, but there will still be a few, most of it non-severe. However, we are going to clear out quickly after that, and then another threat for some showers, thunderstorms by Thursday, Friday. Now, inland. This is the greatest opportunity for severe thunderstorms on Sunday is going to be inland. That's where I'm putting my highest probability, 74 so any time from noon until the early evening time. Then we clear out for a few days. Humidity starts to go up Thursday with some more thunderstorms. Clear out for the following weekend and we do get warmer. The coastline, there is still a threat for severe thunderstorms. However, we will see how much of the marine layer, the stable layer in the atmosphere is going to prevent this or not. It depends how strong that system coming in, that low riding along low pressure system riding on the weather highway, riding just out ahead of that front. The timing is going to be key to see here whether or not the sea breeze, the onshore flow can knock these thunderstorms down before they get to the immediate coastline. So I'll watch that very closely tomorrow. But right now, the threat is greater just a few miles inland. Um, and especially around Augusta, especially around Bangor, especially the southwest interior. Really watch out. Uh, an interior Cumberland, interior York, southern Oxford. Watch out there for the threat for severe weather. And then we warm up uh, for 83, 87 for Thursday and Friday. Make sure you're following on Facebook, uh, jasonnappyweather.com for the latest weather blog.